Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Manan. Today I have a very special here guest here with me, Carolina. Uh, Carolina. Hi everybody. Carolina is from uh, Lithuania. She has been in Estonia for 10 years. She is married to an Estonian. She has one mm -hmm. child. And as her profession, she is a relocation expert. So for the, like, how much time? Whoa, already a few years. Already quite a few years. She has been helping people from all over the world come to Estonia, get their visas, to relocate, help them sell. And it's quite a lot of experience and quite a lot of... Uh, challenges. Challenges. I like yes. challenges. Yes, exactly. So I think what I would like to talk about today with Carolina is about her job. Um, also a little bit about growing up, coming to Estonia, and then finding out about those challenges and helping people cope up with them. So, firstly, welcome, Carolina. It's great to have you. This is our second time meeting, and uh, it's really, really great to, to have you here as a person who is uh, not just Estonian, but also a foreigner like me, but not so much a foreigner that yeah. I'm like on the, I'm like, yeah, I'm on the other end of the spectrum, but you are more, more closer. So, um, so tell me a little bit about yourself growing up in Lithuania and your story till the time you're here. Okay, so my story is uh, like that, that I'm from Lithuania. I grown up in Kaunas and we are calling it the Kaunas is like heart of Lithuania because it's exactly of the center of Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And I grew up there. I was totally a typical Lithuanian girl who didn't have any plans or any ideas to come to Estonia to live. That was never my dream country. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but, so I met Estonian uh, men and I was 19 years old girl when I met the Estonian mm, guy. That's uh, already, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I was pretty early. young. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we were three years in Lithuania. Mm -hmm. So after that, there was the question, I finished my studies and there was the question, what we are doing? And uh, as he had a very good job here, I said, okay, great. I'm so coming in Estonia. You decided to move to, move, move to Estonia, so, but uh, you visited Estonia before as well, right? Actually, yes, in those three years we were together, so... Okay, of many course, times? Yeah, I think we were coming two, three times per year, so I kind of knew it, but there is a totally different thing when you are coming as a tourist and when you are coming to live there. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a it's huge difference. Yeah. totally the big difference, and I remember when I came first time already to live here, it was so nice, it was May. Perfect, the most nice time to come to Estonia, yeah. and everything is blossoming, perfect, nice weather, and I was like, okay, that's very nice. And then it came June, July, August, everything was very nice. And then it's coming November, <laughs> and those who are staying here longer, they know that November in Estonia, it's not the best month to be. <laughs> of course. A few months like these. Yes. A few yes. months like November are not, are not, not the best months. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, okay, so what were your, like, like, challenges when you just visited Estonia? Was there, like, any shock? I know Lithuania is just, like one country away so oh, what was you no know, it's not but, <laughs> it's much more yeah, but, but what was it like what were the differences that you saw as an individual person when you came to Estonia surprises or uh, you know things? what is there was not like a very so big surprises because anyway we are not so like far like totally mm -hmm. far but in the same time it's absolutely different people they're much calmer here mm -hmm. and even Lithuania we're calling ourselves a little bit like by joke way but that we are like uh, uh, Baltic Italianas because uh -huh. you can see that I'm also speaking by heart uh -huh. a lot <laughs> So we are much more speaking. We like to speak much more than mm -hmm. Estonian people. We are much more smiling than Estonian mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. We are also, sorry, my dear Estonian friends, we are much quicker than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired, pew, pew, pew. But uh, that's what, what I have mean by that. It's, of course, not always positive. We are making decisions much quicker, but it means we are thinking, you know, much shorter time. Yeah. So it's not always, not always so positive. But uh, first, first, my impression was like that, that uh, I'm going to shop. I'm shopping very quickly and that's it, you know, and people are choosing. So that was my first impression mm. that people are what they are doing. They're so slowly, but they're not slowly. <laughs> and then when I found my work, I found my first work after uh, one year when I was here. Mm -hmm. And then also it was very strange because uh, my boss was sitting exactly back to me and uh, he was almost never speaking with me. I have mean by this speaking, he was telling to me, Tere, Hadaega, and that's it. And I'm like a typical person who's coming and telling, uh, how was your weekend? What did you do yesterday in the evening? Whoa, today it's a nice day. And he's watching into me and that's it. And the first one year I was thinking that maybe he wants to fire me because... Uh, he doesn't talk to you. He doesn't talk with me, totally. <laughs> 
And in the end, I remember I asked him, like, uh, he started to talk with me after one and a half year. And I asked, what, 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 why? Why? What was behind it? And he said, everything's fine, what I will tell you. <laughs> wow. So it's just like that. Just, just like just, that. Just, just the different personality. Just different culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... Um... Yeah, it's it's so strange because I have like uh, I've been going to my barber for like seven years now. Mm -hmm. It's the same person. I mm -hmm. go there mm -hmm. every month, every forty days, and uh, there are times when I just go there. I sit. I don't. We don't speak a word, and then I'm back because it's the same haircut, yep. same price, same everything. Sometimes we talk. Sometimes we don't talk. But I think it's like uh, it's like a measure of like a friendship that. You're just comfortable in silence mm -hmm. with each other and you don't feel any desire. That's like the highest level of friendship. <laughs> friendship. Yeah, yeah. The, you don't, you don't need to talk anything, anything at all. Um, so let's l move into your like uh, work and mm -hmm. uh, uh, challenges that, that you associate. So what made you join this field of uh, relocation? Was there anything in particular that you liked about this that has made you stick? so much and uh, what was it that made you you know okay i can tell a little bit of the story behind what it was because i'm 10 years living in estonia but uh, in this period i was living in belgium as well mm -hmm. and we moved to belgium for a few years to live and uh, we were moving from estonia to belgium it's european countries it should be very easy and very yeah. simple mm -hmm. but actually it's not oh. actually it's not and as you don't know anything how to go where to go when to go mm. and how much costs something you don't know anything and you don't have any person who's helping to you yeah. it was actually pretty challenging it was really challenging because i had a uh, one month baby on my hands oh. when we were moving it mm -hmm. and uh, i didn't know anything i had to start to read and most of the information it was in french or Dutch language mm. so as i'm not speaking none of those languages it was really complicated and uh, then I moved back to Estonia. I went back to my work where I, where I was working before. Everything was very nice with that work. But uh, one of my very good friends, she just told me that, Carolina, you remember how difficult it was. Mm -hmm. Come, you know, you know very well how difficult it is. Come and help for people. And I said, I don't know, actually, because I have my work. I'm very satisfied. I have perfect, nice colleagues and mm -hmm. everything is okay with them. And she said, yeah, but do you remember actually how big challenge it was? And you can help. Mm -hmm. You can actually influence and you can do the difference. And I was thinking quite a long time because I think she, first time she invited me, maybe in September. Then she invited me on November. And finally, on January, I agreed to come. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, quite a long time till I agreed to come. Yeah, yeah you took your time. But uh, when you came to this field initially, uh, what made you stay? I can tell you first when I came, then it was very challenging because I came from the sales field. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. came from totally different field. Yeah. I didn't know anything about laws, about what, what is happening here. I didn't know anything. And I came and first uh, for me shock was that actually there are so many documents, so many regulations, what you need to know. And when you are coming from a very comfortable world where you are feeling everything is going very nicely, you are a professional in some field, you are going to different, totally different place. It was like a shock. But then, uh, then you are kind of seeing the different. You are seeing the different and you are meeting those people and those people are telling thank you to you. Yeah. That uh, not thank you because this official bureaucratic thank you, but they are really thanking you that you helped them. Mm -hmm. That actually your words, your emotional support, your everything, it's made so big different to them. Yeah. And it's very often that, uh, yes, of course, I'm helping with the documents and its main part, the documents. But sometimes it's a question, is it the documents or this emotional support helping the most of people? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there is documents. Yes, documents, even computer can uh, fulfill on these times. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you are telling the person that I'm waiting you here, I'm really waiting, I will help you. If you have questions, come and call me. There will be no any problems, no anything. We will solve it together. Mm -hmm. And that's actually... Those first, my customers, because I was really doubted myself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're coming to a new working place. What is coming? And those first customers who said to me that, thank you, Carolina. Mm -hmm. Let's go. We want to make you thank you dinner. We want to, I don't know, we are bringing you something from our home mm -hmm. countries because mm -hmm. we are so feeling thankful. Mm -hmm. That's actually, that's what is keeping me here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can speak from my own. I mean, we both have gone through relocation experiences and it's such a sensitive and stressful time in your life because you are you are taking a gamble, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
maybe for a single person, for one person, it's it's probably a risk that's mm -hmm. worth taking. But if you have like a family, a wife, a child, then it becomes like a huge factor. You have to think of your personal circumstances, what you're getting there, what your future plans are. And you and even if, if everything is sorted, sometimes you need, you know, a little push me or like uh, support. Yeah, like, it as a support. Like a like a yeah, support to just tell you that it okay, it's gonna be okay, it's stress it happens, it's it's normal. Um so uh, do you know Manan that mainly why people are leaving Estonia when they're coming with families, why they're leaving Estonia? Uh, they're not, not leaving because of the work. They're not leaving because they don't like Estonian mm -hmm. culture or uh, they don't like Estonian weather. You know, mm -hmm. what is for me, yeah, okay, yeah. it's a very yeah. big thing. It's a, it's a big thing, yeah. Yes, but because of spousals. Oh. Because spousals are not finding what to do here. They're feeling lonely here mm -hmm. and uh, they don't, they're not finding any friends here. And in the same time, if you have children, you are coming to this circle all the time. You are bringing child to children's garden, to school. You are picking them up, watching uh, them homeworks mm -hmm. together. And that's it. But husband is coming back from work. It's mainly it's husbands who are coming to mm -hmm. work anyway. And husband is coming back from work and he is telling, I did today and that and that. And I met very nice people. Yeah, yeah. Everything is so nice. But uh, wife was at home. Yeah. And uh, one story, what she has to tell that I was bringing children to school. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And uh, this one, how we are telling that uh, it's a very correct sentence. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, yeah it is. Because uh, that is like that. If yes. wife is satisfied, if wife is finding the place mm -hmm. also here in this country, then I'm pretty sure they will stay for a long time because yeah. it's a very good country for living here. Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, it's important to mention here that there is a special program that helps, uh, uh, I think it was called uh, Reinvent Yourself, Reinvent Yourself. Mm -hmm. and that is specifically for the spouses of professionals yes. that are relocated to Estonia. It's actually a really, really good program I've heard from many people and there is a, like a huge wait list there. Yes. There, yes. There, there is as well. But do you see this problem happening? Like, do you see enough numbers of people who are moving abroad that you think it's a problem? I don't think so. It's a problem because it's also a very like individual thing. Yeah. You know, it's uh, if person is not feeling good in Estonia, most probably person will not feel good anywhere and it's just missing home. Yeah. yeah. It's very off this one. And uh, this one, we cannot do anything yeah, because yeah. this person most of the time is just missing home yeah. and you cannot very much help him. Yeah. You can push, but it doesn't mean that it will work. But uh, for those people who, let's say it's so-so, who are coming, they're interesting, but maybe they're afraid. Yeah. They're afraid to do alone because your husband, mainly it's husband is going to work. You are alone. You're afraid to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You don't know language. You don't know people, especially if it's different skin color, then it's very, very people afraid. Yeah. Let's say people just afraid. But the spousal program is definitely helping to connect people yeah. because there is 15 wonderful people who are yeah. coming at one moment. They are having, uh, we are calling kind of like speed networking. There is coming many HR managers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're helping. They're watching your CVs. They're giving you many advices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're teaching you about Estonian culture. And uh, then you understand that you are not alone, actually. Mm -hmm. There are many, many people who are the same as the you. The same and the same challenges yes. that they go through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the specifics of your job. Like, what do you do at your job? So at what point do you start to come in contact with a person? Mm -hmm. And at what point do you leave the contact with that person? Okay. When is so, your job done? Yeah. So my job is never done. Okay. <laughs> First thing, my job is never done. And I'm telling all the time, even after goodbye email, because I'm writing that, okay, our this migration trip together is finished. But uh, anyway, if you have questions or something, please write me. I will, I will all the time help you. But how it's starting everything. So we are having the companies who are searching the person, mm -hmm. searching some talents. And uh, when they are already agreeing that this person should come to Estonia, then they are noticing us. Mm -hmm. And they're just writing... Uh, information about this person that uh, this person is coming from this country and uh, he should uh, join the company i don't know someday and that's it I ha i'm having basically only email address and uh, then i'm contacting the person and in uh, we are all time counting in 24 hours that we are contacting and we are having first meet okay so our this first google meet it's like that that we are telling uh, where they are coming we are asking have you ever been because like yesterday i had this uh, customer from argentina who he's never been in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, and he's coming to Estonia mm -hmm. just as an adventure. Mm -hmm. And we are asking the reasons why they are coming, you know, with who they are coming. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to immediately kind of made up the plan 
how to do it because every case is different case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody has uh, two children, somebody has four children, somebody has dog, cat, and the snake, and yeah. they want to bring them, everybody together. So every case is different case and you need to react differently. Mm -hmm. And also people are different. Some people are very curious about how it's going everything and they want to know all the details and everything, how it's going. And they're writing 10 times per day mm -hmm. that even like repeating the same and they're Questions writing, from... yes, they're writing mm -hmm. and writing. But some people are, okay, I trust that you know your work, mm -hmm. so do it. Mm -hmm. So this is how it's going, our all the time trip starting. And trip finishing, then when person is receiving his temporary resident permit card, and we are showing also how to use it. Mm -hmm. Because in Estonia, Estonia is like a country. Mm -hmm. So there is many, many procedures what you can do in uh, email or in uh, just with digital site yeah, yeah so we are showing how to use it and basically after that our trip together like immigration trip is finishing but as i mentioned it's never finished yeah, yeah. um if you had to put a number how many people have you relocated since you start work oh, well, i mean me myself um or that you our have been, company or uh, you yourself or you have been in contact with wait it's actually quite a lot because uh, once i was trying to count i believe maybe 100 that's, maybe 100. Uh, that, that's a lot and these are the people that you talk to yeah and course, thoroughly course. and you know like every detail about their, yeah. their, their, their. Yeah. um and uh, uh how many nationalities Wow, that one I have never counted actually, but uh, let's say like that, that it's starting from uh, Philippines, Philippines, India, Pakistan, and finishing with Argentine, US, Colombia, Brazil. It's like from everywhere. But uh, let's say mostly non-European or yeah, non-European, yeah. non uh, including Russia. Oh, Russia right now, not so much okay. because it's just a ban. They cannot come. Yeah. Uh, Turkey. Yeah, and then... well, Turkey. Yes, I have many, many customers from Turkey. Yeah, uh, South Asia, Pakistan, India. Yes. These, yes. these countries, and then I'm guessing Philippines as well. From Philippines, actually, quite many Filipinos okay. are coming. Yeah. But this is a more recent phenomenon, recently, or no? No, maybe, maybe not so. But maybe has it always so. been? Because I've never seen many people, and I'm also because I'm also like. Uh, sort of like the frontline person mm -hmm. for people coming to Estonia. So I get a lot of more questions from, uh, from I don't know, people from uh, Pakistan, India, South America. Hardly ever it's been like from, from Philippines. You know if, maybe what is the reason? Yeah. They are much more quiet people. Oh, really? Yes. They are much more quiet people. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, if I'm telling to them, they are trusting at your word. They are never... Uh, like we are like bombing with the emails. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because if you have a customer from India, Pakistan, sorry, my dear Manan, yeah, they're bombing that's fine. with the emails. That's, that's fine. I totally understand the, the sentiment. I mean, one of the reasons for that is that, I mean, I can speak at least for Pakistan as well, that we don't have any trust in the institutions or companies. Like we, we things don't work. Mm -hmm. That's the that's thing. Th things only work if you are pushing. So... And it sort of like stays in our head, this mentality that I need to push, I mm -hmm. need to do this and that that's how things will happen or they will happen faster. But as soon as you get out of Pakistan, you see that this, this, mm -hmm. this thing, it, it doesn't work. So, yeah. I think it's different cultures, just yeah, yeah, yeah. different yeah. cultures and different understanding because I know, for example, South American people also, they're not having so many questions, mm -hmm. but, but maybe for them also, for them, immigration is much easier to come mm -hmm. to Europe mm -hmm. because they have visa freedom. It means one step immediately less to make it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a big, big thing. And um, I, I mean, Pakistan uh, itself is very, very uh, poor in uh, passport mm -hmm. ranking as well. So that's, that's a big problem. I mean, South Asia um, in uh, general. But, uh, okay, so I think let's dive into our, like, uh, main topic about <laughs> like these nationalities and cultures and uh, the challenges mm -hmm. that they have faced. So, so the first big challenge when anybody is coming to Estonia uh, from all these developing countries, let's say that you don't have a visa free entry. Mm -hmm. So how does that process work of you helping that person? And what are the challenges that you face in this, like getting this, this, the, okay. So I can just tell how it's overlooking the process mm -hmm. because when we are contacting the person, so if we are speaking about the specifically these countries, they need visa. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like a Pakistan, I'm taking you as example. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take <laughs> so me I example. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. So if you need a visa, it means you have to go to Ankara or Abu Dhabi, yeah, submit yeah. document. Yeah, yeah. Many people, most of all people, they had never been out from Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. So first challenge immediately coming that some strange girl from a strange country, which called Estonia, telling to you how to do it, where to go, when to do that. It's already first thing sometimes coming for Pakistan men specifically that some girl is telling what to do. Mm -hmm. So it's first challenge coming. Second, that you are going somewhere. You are going, you are going to Turkey or Abu Dhabi. You have to stay there two weeks, sometimes two 30 days. Again, new place, new challenges, new people, totally different. Mm -hmm. Then you are stressing that you are waiting answer. Yeah, yeah. After that, you are coming to Estonia. Mm -hmm. So it's totally different world. You are landing here. Most of the time we are ordering taxi for our customers because you are traveling, you are so stressful. Mm -hmm. And if you need to also, it's the different taxi cultures. Yeah, yeah. If you are taking South Asia countries or European countries, it's totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are coming here and we are ordering taxi that you will go safely to your, some temporary accommodation where you are staying. Then after that, you are going to work. I very often getting questions, what clothes I have to wear? What shoes I have to wear? Can I go, I don't know, what I have to take with me? Is it allowed to do something or not allowed? Because people having so many questions, yeah, yeah. what sometimes for uh, some Europeans might look like strange question because we are going in Estonia at work, what we want, what yeah. we are wearing, whatever clothes we want. But there, those people are worrying about this thing. So then after that, they're starting to work. And uh, at some point, we need to go temporary resident permit to get mm -hmm. them. Then again, next stress, how it's going that, what is the procedure? So overall, all my work, it's kind of trying to explain uh, immigration trip as understandable as possible, mm -hmm. as simple as possible. And uh, all these negative stress emotions to take on myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the person already, he's stressful. He's in a new place. Mm -hmm. He already, his stress level is maximum. Yeah. So if he has to start to worry about this immigration procedures, it's coming totally, totally disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, it's a it's a big thing, and I, th I think getting the visa and everything is a big uh, hurdle as well. Mm -hmm. But I think the good part is because for me, I had to do everything by myself mm -hmm. as well when I came for studies. So I had to arrange everything. I, I had a scholarship, but I mean, uh, the ticket was paid, but I had to arrange everything mm -hmm. myself even when I came here, and. Uh, I think it's a big benefit if they have somebody that they can, you know, like find and somebody who's talking mm -hmm. to them and explaining to them. Um, actually, that was the big reason why I started this like YouTube channel as well, why I wanted to, to talk about, uh, about about these things. And, and I like get, get so many questions about this. So about like visa challenges, like what should, like what are some common things that you think people should do or the common like, problems mm -hmm. people people face okay so first first thing what uh, people are actually uh, cannot say that making mistake but uh, people overthinking mm -hmm. because if documents are prepared either you prepare it yourself company prepared to you and you already know and having all documents anyway there will be a short interview with you yeah and uh, we are all the time telling to our customers what questions will come actually the questions are really very simple mm. and uh, they're asking why you're coming to Estonia. Mm. Do you know here somebody? How did you find your work? What do you like about this work? The questions are very simple. Yeah. If you are sitting on your couch, like we are sitting here, then it's simple. But people are thinking that maybe they want to hear some specific answers. Yeah. Especially from uh, Pakistan, India, they are ready for that, that somebody kind of waiting the answers, some answers. Mm. But actually there is no, you are just telling, I came here because I found the work. My yeah. work is that. And I'm really excited. No, I don't know anybody here or mm -hmm. I have many friends already here. Mm -hmm. There is no correct or wrong answer. So very big challenge that people overthinking. Yeah, yeah, I and then it. they are having much more stress because they are creating the stress for yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah. And especially those people who are coming with us, we are all the time telling that relax, everything is okay. Your yeah. documents are correct. If you have trouble, you have my phone number. You can call me immediately day or night. We are waiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, that it is that when it's coming this uh, visa time, we are trying all the time to not have any meetings, anything that in case some urgent things happening, we are ready on the phone mm -hmm. to give advice to support person and to be totally honest, put, 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 it had never been necessary. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like something that I, the questions that I get a lot myself as well is, 
how should I prepare for the you interview? Know? Like this is like a huge question. I don't, I don't understand this myself as well because the job of, of the person who's interviewing you is just to make sure that you are what you said in the documents. Yes. That's yes. it. Yes. Like you look the same, your name is the same, your questions position, are the same, position your position and everything is the same. And I, what I usually tell people is that just answer what the person asks. Mm -hmm. Don't overstate. Yes. Don't, yes. You don't have to give any stories. You don't have to justify anything. I mean, if you are there at the interview, this already means that you have some kind of approval, right? Yes. Otherwise, they wouldn't even yes. uh, allow you to be yes. here. So their job there is not really to reject you, mm -hmm. but unless you give them a big, big, big red flag yes. that, exactly. that, uh, that, that, yeah, that you are being rejected. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's that is that is the per first point because uh, when uh, people are coming to Estonia, mainly they are coming uh, for employment. Mm -hmm. That means that before visa, we have to get them short-term employment. Yeah. So if already we are getting this paper for them, it means officially they can start work here. Yeah. They are officially kind of trustable people, so you don't need anymore so much to worry and uh, overthink what answer should be correct. Does I know somebody in Estonia or I don't know? Hmm. If you know, say that you know. Yeah. If you don't know, say it's, that you it's don't. It's not know. an it's not a negative yes. uh, a negative. Uh, I think one of the things that I can give you like a little bit Pakistani perspective as well why people are so worried about that is that our main uh, idea about uh, visa interviews mm -hmm. is for like like visa interviews is for US or mm -hmm. or UK and uh, these visas are very hard to get. Like if you fulfill all those criteria and all mm -hmm. these things, the person, for example, in, if you're giving for a US visa, mm -hmm. the person can easily reject you and they don't have to specify any reason that why, why the visa was rejected. So that's why people are really, really afraid of, you know, like because they, the mo like nobody has any stories about getting a visa to Estonia, right? That if they ask people, mm -hmm. they only know, okay, we, I went to the US, I got the visa yeah. for there, I went to, I don't know, Germany. Or I, I was rejected. Yeah, yeah, or I was rejected. So this is like a big fear in the people's head. But for, I, don't, I don't think for Estonia, for specifically, if you are coming for like employment, mm -hmm. then you already have a major thing sorted. And if you're, of course. Yes they're talking to you then they have a lot of heavy guns on their side <laughs> so yeah yeah um but um so the, the the visa is one thing so you help prepare the yes. documents and everything for them it's you know that's what i mentioned you that actually prepare the document is only one part of the job mm -hmm. prepare the document even soon i believe computer can do it yeah, yeah. so but it's not actually main work hmm. main work what i'm seeing it and main value from my work what i'm seeing is this emotional support hmm. because the person is stressed computer hmm. will never support him mm -hmm. computer will never uh, i don't know give him advices yeah. or uh, computer will give you yes advice you know go there do that and that but it's not that what you need. Yeah. And it's very often when people are calling and telling, you know, I don't know, I'm sitting right now next to embassy. I don't know what to do. Is it everything okay? My hands are sweating. What I now, what I now will have to do it. You just have to relax. Yeah, you just have to relax. You just have to relax. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. You are totally prepared. And uh, that it is, you know, like compliments and good words making miracles. Mm -hmm. And then the person going there, he is going with positive emotions that everything will be fine. Actually. That some strange girl from strange country, she said that it will be fine. Mm -hmm. And the main it's working. Yeah. And it's working. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the thing why this uh, moral support is actually much more important than only document documents. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very stressful time. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the, you're struggling with, with so many different things. So let's move ahead a little bit and then talk about, okay, your visa. Is, mm -hmm. let's say you get it, your visa is done, and now you are coming to Estonia. So do you help with the, buying the tickets or do you, no. the, the company? Company. Company. Yes, there is different companies. They have different uh, ideas. Some, some that person buying himself and companies later on returning money. Some companies buying, it depends how it's agreement. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you suggest anything or do you help them uh, or do you it suggest? Depends. It's actually very much depends because most of the time uh, people already knows what they mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. Knows that exactly through where, which countries they want to fly, how they want to come. There is actually, basically they don't need any support on this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this thing, but uh, what is important when they're landing and we are very often telling to the companies that uh, 
for you it's actually so small investment to order the taxi yeah. for the person but if the person were flying from let's say pakistan he was flying 20 hours you know with somewhere stopover so person was flying 20 hours with his three luggages and then he landed in estonia what's then Mm. And uh, he don't know taxi, he don't have local money, he don't have local phone, he don't know anything. And is it hard, it's, is it like very expensive to just order the taxi? And the taxi is just picking up the person. Mm -hmm. Person can calmly go to his temporary accommodation. It's already, actually it's cheap, cheap thing, mm -hmm. but it's giving so much trust for person. Yeah. Yeah. And in the company and in the country and that somebody's actually caring how yeah. he's feeling yeah, yeah it's a huge thing i mean every little support at this mm -hmm. time is is a very very huge thing I, I i don't know where i read that but uh it sort of like m makes your loyalty to the company that yes. that's doing that that goes up so there is a land actual benefit for the companies who provide these kind of like support to their employees mm -hmm. that the comp that the employee wants to stay with them mm -hmm. stay, stay with them more so and then also, what is the thing when uh, our talent, we are calling all of them our talents, mm -hmm. when they're arriving to Estonia, we are all the time trying either to wait them in the airport, there is, it depends what time they are coming, mm -hmm. but, uh, or we are waiting them in the airport, or we are meeting with them first day when they're arriving. Okay, okay. Because we are giving them small welcome back from Estonian mm -hmm. side, and this, what is all the time is inside, is Estonian SIM card. Mm -hmm. Because if person are coming here, he don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. He don't know what to buy, how to buy. Mm. So we are giving all the time prepaid SIM card to That's them. That's really nice. And public transportation card. Nice. Wow. So these things... Half the job is done already. <laughs> you can move and you can talk. What else do you need? Yes, and chocolate. Yeah, of course. Don't forget chocolate. Yeah. Don't and chocolate. But these kind of things, it's uh, very... Again, it doesn't cost a lot. It doesn't cost a lot. Small but things. Yeah. Yes. But small things matters. Mm -hmm. And the person, let's say he can walk everywhere. He can use internet. He that's it. It's yeah. already person feeling halfly Estonian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so much that you could do just just on the internet, and that's yeah. like a, that's like a huge benefit. Um, what are some things that people need to, or like like people need to do better when they are coming or their first few days, or when they are when they are landing here? What are the common problems that you see? I would say like that, that again, it depends on the people, but mm -hmm. uh, very often uh, people are thinking that I will come to Estonia and next day I'm going to work. Mm. Actually, it's not a good idea because you are tired. Yeah. You are tired after the trip. You are tired, just it's new place, mm -hmm. new surrounding, you don't know anything. And then immediately put on your shoulder, new work, new people, new yeah, more. Yeah. That actually, sometimes it's good to take a few days break, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but very often people want to do immediately everything. I came here. I am immediately going to new work. If I, if I need something, I'm going immediately to police department, submit document for everything. And I'm telling, calm down. You have time, mm -hmm. you know. Take one week, you know, just calmly for yourself. Walk around, get to know the people. And that's what is really, really helping. Mm -hmm. And also what is, uh, it's like a funny idea, but uh, people are putting so many clothes and so many things together with them, especially people from India. They're bringing huge luggages of Indian spices mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, sometimes I'm telling in the first interview that you don't need to bring all your life, you know, or like to buy something extra very much. In Estonia, there are lots of shops. You can buy everything here also. Yeah, yeah. But I know myself as I am immigrant, I know when I was coming from Lithuania to Estonia, I was also bringing my favorite food together with me, my some kind of stuff, what I was telling that, no, in Estonia, I will not find it. Mm -hmm. You will not find the same. Maybe you will find better. Yeah. You just need to try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is kind of thing that um, people are bringing too many things. <laughs> it's one thing. And other people are hurry too much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, regarding the things, I think, like, when I first came to Estonia back in 2014, mm -hmm. It was a challenge to find all all these things here. Like people often used to go to Helsinki or uh, even Stockholm. Like I used. What did you, what you did? Like you like, like 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 for example spices or okay. special ingredients or for example Pakistani mm -hmm. Indian and these things. Um, but now we have mm -hmm. some really good shops here which are very economical. Even at that time you could buy something, but it was really expensive. Mm -hmm. Like because there wasn't so much demand. But now it's really. I mean you don't need to buy much stuff no. unless there is something highly specific that yes. you need. Then, then you need to. You don't need to fill your bag. I used to. Do, I, I did that, but you no, don't. You, so yeah, you know yeah. I, I did that. You don't have to do that anymore. So that's like the the, the big thing. So 
it's again you know in the same time i'm all the time telling that uh, take something small with you yeah because definitely it's coming when you are coming to whatever country first few months it's very nice yeah. because you are excited new people new work and it's very nice but then it's coming this whole period when you know already everything and you are kind of feeling okay that's it mm -hmm. that's it what i can expect more so for this low period it's actually very good to have something small from your home mm -hmm. and i don't know coffee some spices really from home but that's it so you don't need to bring that luggage you know you can have something a little bit small and that's it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um what about accommodation? Do our companies, like I know that companies book temporary accommodations, yes. right? But what about after that? Like, because do they, or do you help with that? Do they need to do those? Yes, we are helping. It also depends on the package which okay. company are taking. So it very much depends on that. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's like that, that we are helping and we are going together with our talents. We are going together with them to every, every place. We mm -hmm. are watching together. We are all of them fighting for better conditions. And uh, we are rechecking all time contracts. What sometimes there are written so many funny things in the contracts and still many Estonian people, especially if you are renting not from the company, but from the private person, mm -hmm. they're making agreements only in Estonian language. Yeah. So this one is actually really very complicated thing. Mm -hmm. And I understand that yes, Estonian language is Estonian. So yes, but um, anyway. Yeah. anyway. Yeah. So we are rechecking very much that. And I know that for some people or some nationalities it's a little bit more difficult to mm -hmm. find out and especially indians and pakistanis because of your spices <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it, 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 i think that's like a problem that people often uh, mention that uh, yeah. because of the cooking they don't yes. want people who are yes. from these but in the same time we're all time telling that uh, you just need good ventilation and the yeah. problem is solved yeah so good ventilation candles it works <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can tell yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, but I think that is a that 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 is a valid challenge as well. And of course, it's a, it's a it's a concern as well. Mm, yeah. So yeah. So I think if you're helping them with accommodation, that's like a huge load lifted mm -hmm. from 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 them. Um, what are some things or any things that you would like to mention when they're looking for accommodation that maybe they can do better? That talent. Or I don't know. Actually, I don't know what they can do better, but... Um, if they can prepare something or what... Uh, they can overall a little bit watch those pages because uh, some people, you know, they are just thinking that, okay, I'm coming to Estonia, that's my budget and that's it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have to think into account also that that uh, your budget is one thing, but utility bills in Estonia are quite big. Oh, yeah. You uh, know that very well. Electricity, yes. You don't, you don't, yeah, this is such a huge thing that... It could be as equal as your rent that you're paying in mm -hmm. utilities and all these things. Yes. It's so this so one, this one definitely they need to think. Then another thing also, sometimes you can pay a little bit more for rent and to take a newer house, mm -hmm. then your utility bills will be much smaller. Yeah, and yeah. actually you save money. Yes. So it's, you need to think many of those small things that uh, if you are telling, okay, my budget is 500 euros, I'm taking cheap uh, apartment. But then you are paying 250 for utility bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead that you will take some apartment with 600 euros yeah, yeah. and your utility will be 100. Yeah, yeah. So this one you need a little bit to pay more attention for this mm -hmm, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, accommodation in Estonia was really a big challenge. Mm -hmm. I think in that beginning for me as well, it was really, really difficult to find because you could went at a place you did everything, you fulfilled everything, mm -hmm. but then, of course, if there is a local person and they fulfill everything mm -hmm. too, then, they, of course, they have a preference. It's yeah. not, I mean, people are more trusting of people who are in Estonia and who are, who are Estonian. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's, that's something. And also, what is the thing that when a person coming to Estonia, most of the time he don't have yet TRP card. Yeah, yeah. So without temporary resident permit card, again, uh, you are here only with a visa. Yeah. And uh, if I can choose, if I'm renting my apartment, Am I renting an apartment who already has this temporary resident permit or I'm renting that person who is with D visa and maybe tomorrow he is telling goodbye to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is also what is coming a challenge for people. Mm -hmm. That's why for our companies, we are all time telling that, okay, we can help for people. We can help because it is difficult. Yeah. It is difficult, but um, everybody counting money. Yeah, yeah of course. It's <laughs> <laughs> money, money runs the world. Um, Let's talk about, about, so the next step after you are here, you are here on a D visa is mm -hmm. to get the TRP, right? Yeah. 
So that is what you help as well yes, to, yes. to do. All so the first thing that they need to do is, of course, book an appointment. And uh, they are not doing that. Most of the time, because uh, the queue lines are so long, yeah. it's uh, two, three months. Yeah. So when we are already getting to know that we are having new talent, yeah. we are immediately booking the time. Oh, wow. Okay. So it means when person is coming in uh, upcoming month, we are trying that it will be not first or second week, but in upcoming month, uh, he is going together with us all the time together with us mm -hmm. to submit document because when you are going to submit document I'm going few years and for me it's still not a pleasure to go to police office yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's still stressful and you are sitting in front of angry lady who is watching like sorry stone in France with totally cold face she's typing something she's watching into you again typing something again watching into you and uh, I know for myself it's still stress and I think every all the time will be stress. Yeah, like it's it's like your fate is tied into yes. their hands. Yes. Like they can just say no and your your life just turns upside down and what what is it that you can do? So Yes, so we are all the time going together with people. We are telling that it will be this procedure. It's totally fine. They are actually they are not watching into you. They are just maybe, I don't know, making some exercise. Like it's the their daily job, like they yes. don't have to be they don't have anything against you, you know. Mm. But uh but yes, so you are going together with them to police office. You are telling how it will be, what will be. And this probably it's stress level. It's quite high. Yes? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anything like overall regarding documentation or uh, up till this time when they are applying for TRP, is there uh, something that maybe people can do better? Uh, I don't know, maybe prepare their documents beforehand or... No, we are or, preparing documents. Uh, okay. We are preparing all documents. So person, when... Uh, Person has to be on time, first thing, and person has to have his passport. Yeah. Because I have one time one very, very nice Turkish guy who forgot his passport. <laughs> wow. And then I was going alone to submit document wow. instead of him when he went to his home and he was living on the other side of Tallinn. Wow. And he was late half an hour and the lady said to me, if he is not coming in uh, five minutes, no, that's it. We cannot do anything. And I was holding finger crossed that come, come, but... He was living on the other side of Tallinn and it was 4.30. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so person has to just be on time and do not forget his passport. All other things, we can solve it. Mm -hmm. If you forgot, I don't know, let's say it's couple and forgot marriage certificate or insurance or everything else, it's totally no any problem. But passport and being on time, because it's very simple thing. If you are not on time and you are skipping your appointment, next appointment will be after two, three months. Yeah, yeah. So these two things are really, really important. Yeah, that's uh, that's so. I mean, uh, yeah, that's that's the minimum that you can do. <laughs> yes. Like that's the minimum yes. that you can do. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think you're doing a lot of magic because <laughs> because uh, for me because I didn't have any help doing all these things and. Uh, yeah, it's it's like so much little things, so much stuff that 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 you need to do. I remember exactly this guy. It was like that that uh, we went to in the beginning when you are coming to submit document, you are going to photo booth. Yeah. So he went to photo booth. He made everything. Then I asked signatures because on each document you need to put signature. And then I said, okay, our appointment is after five minutes, so take your passport and let's wait. And he's checking his pocket, and I'm seeing his face is changing, and he's telling. Carolina, I don't have my passport. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like uh, standing and I'm seeing he totally started to sweat and hands are shaking. And I'm like, okay, if I will start also to do the same, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. You know, we both will stand here. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, where, where are you living? He said, I'm living in, uh, is, I don't know, in Estonia and in Mustama area. I'm living in Mustama area. I said, okay, I'm ordering you both. Go to Mustama. And he said, no, Carolina, but I'm working in Rotterman area and my home keys is in Rotterman area. <laughs> oh, and then I remember, and you are watching, it's four minutes left of appointment. Why do you leave your keys at one place? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's, I didn't ask so much. Then I called to my one colleague. I said, listen, can you right now go to Rotterman area to pick up his home keys and to bring those home keys, you know, to, to his home? Wow. I am sending him by boat direct to his home. Wow. So she dropped everything and she went direct to Rotterman to pick up home keys. And somehow we managed, yeah. And then I remember I'm sitting in front of the lady and the lady said, you know, you are not this guy who's submitting yeah. documents. No, I'm not, but he forgot his passport. Yeah. <laughs> and she's watching into me. Like, what? He forgot his passport. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's watching me with that kind of, you know, like, how that, <laughs> that is possible. And that's it. But we managed. And this guy is very nicely here and everything is fine. So... But that was probably one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. When you have to kind of collect yourself, 
and you just have to be you know like okay i cannot start the stress right now because i need to solve it yeah. and that's it that's and it. you have to think so quickly and everything's fine yeah i think uh, a lot of times when i'm in these situations um it's actually a lot more stressful when thinking about it rather than in, in, in the actual, because in the actual situation, you don't have time to think. Yes. You just have to do something, right? You don't have time to stress. Yeah, you don't have time to stress. Sorry. You just have to do it. You just, you just have to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember I'm standing also and uh, that's it. Million ideas in the head, what to do. And that guy totally, he is like that shaking next to me. I'm like, okay. I cannot, oh, you know, my life I is cannot, over. yes, yes, and he's like, how did I forget, Carolina, you know, I was all the time, very, I was all the time having my passport with me, and I forgot this time, I, it's always like that, it's totally fine, relax, and I'm like, it's not totally fine, I don't know what to do myself, I don't know, relax, relax, but you have to somehow calm down the person, you have to prove to him and for yourself that it's fine, mm -hmm. we will solve it together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we solved it. Yeah, it's almost like being a coach at times. You just, yes. oh, I have nerves. And yeah, it's, uh, I, I think, I think part of what your job makes it challenging and also interesting that it's always dealing with people, yes. right? Like documentation is one aspect of people, right? Yeah. It's just people translated into words. Mm -hmm. You deal with the talent, you deal with the police, mm -hmm. you deal with, um, I don't know, all the other aspects, yeah. but it's always, always, always people. Um, mm -hmm. So, so, so person is here, they've, they've applied. When do you think the immigration process is formally over? Are, because, you know, there is, a, we mentioned also that there is like a dip, like the first month mm -hmm. or two, you are here, you're excited, everything is new, and then there is a dip mm -hmm. in, uh, in your motivation mm -hmm. and you feel, start to feel down mm -hmm. because it, it, of course, it, it is very strange. So, do you, are you there when this thing happens or people reach out to you? Uh, it depends because as usually this thing happening already when we submitted TRP documents, mm -hmm. when we submitted and then basically we don't have anymore any topics like work topic to speak. But then very often we are just, I don't know, I'm writing, hi, how are you? And the person, I don't know, of course, all people are nice. They're telling, I'm fine. You know, it's like standard answer. What is not telling actually anything? I'm fine. Then you are telling, okay, how is your job? Then you are starting to speak more. That's why very much I like when I'm communicating with people through WhatsApp or Viber mm -hmm, or Messenger, mm -hmm. because if you're writing in the email, it's official. Yeah. It's uh, nobody starting to actually tell you what is happening. Mm -hmm. And of course, the best if we both are finding time to go to drink coffee. Yeah. You are just sitting in front of person and uh, you are listening his story. Of course, most of people think, no, everything is fine. But you are seeing that it's not fine. You yeah, know, you are yeah. seeing that it's not fine. And then you are starting to speak that what is bothering you? I don't know. People are not able to find Estonian friends. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. I told you it would be hard, but it's totally fine. You know what I mentioned. And uh, or the biggest problem also. So friends, then uh, if there is different skin color people, they are telling that, I don't know, in the tram, uh, some lady is taking her back closer to, your, to herself, you know, when she's seeing me. And you are trying to explain that it's not against you. Mm -hmm. It's just just like that person thinking mm -hmm. it's totally fine you know it's it's not fine like fine but it's not against you mm -hmm. you should not feel somehow bad from that mm -hmm. and you are trying to explain and you are speaking and speaking with person and trying to find out where is the real reason yeah and when you're finding the real reason then it's already no problems mm -hmm. yeah it's um it's, it's, I, I think when people get their documentation and everything, it's like one journey is over, but then this, there is this huge next step ahead, which nobody thinks about too much. It's nobody holding your hand. Yeah. Which, say like that. It's, it, you're all alone in that journey because you can't, like, yeah, uh, you can't document making friends. Like, yes. you have to do it. You have to do it yourself. You have to get out. And I think this is one of those things where, um, we, like, like, I, tend to talk most about it, mm -hmm. like uh, helping people make friends and because I, I went In through. Estonia, it's hard to make friends. Yeah, it, you it, know yourself with Estonian yeah, people. Yeah, it's definitely hard. And I think one of the things that makes it even harder is, uh, is, is the fact that the language issue, of okay. course, um, it's a big thing. And language is like not just, I mean, for communication, right? Mm -hmm. Because... Um, if you know the language, it doesn't mean that you will communicate better with Estonians yeah. because you can just communicate with like this as well mm -hmm. or in English. But 
I think the biggest benefit of learning Estonian language is that you are able to make friends because they're more comfortable. Yes. So it's like breaking the ice. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, a little bit Estonian and then you break the ice and then, you know, that's, that matter is. Because also what is showing when uh, people are asking me, I want to study Estonian language. What mm -hmm. do you think about that? I'm doing study. Because even that small thing that you are able to say this first words as a Tere, Hadayaga, Aita, Palun, mm -hmm. that's already makes big difference mm -hmm. because people are feeling that actually you want to be here. Yeah. You are showing some kind of Initiative. Yes, initiative, yeah, that you want to stay here. And this this is a very big thing. Yeah, it is. It is a very big thing because I don't think you need like Estonian for communication specifically in Estonia. I mean, it's not like, for example, if you were like in Germany or yeah. like, like Japan where you can't go through the bureaucracy mm -hmm. or everything without uh, without knowing the language. But yeah. in Estonia... Yeah. Estonians it, actually are speaking very well English. Yeah, yeah. They speak very well. Mm -hmm. So I think this is this is a huge aspect of that of like making friends as well. But then again, I think um, it's a cultural shift. Like mm -hmm. it's a huge cultural shift. I mean, all the people that you are helping are from very very different cultures. Yes. Did I tell you a story when uh, one time Indian guy came, <laughs> and uh, I was used to because just before I had many people from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they are coming, we are commu we were communicating. Let's say one month before, so we are like best friend. We are coming, hugging. And then person came from India and we were telling a hello like that for each other, like it was two meters between us. And it's so big, big, so, so big cultural yeah, differences. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that we have some kind of bad relationship. Yeah. It's just cultural difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a huge difference. So like, tell me more like these cultural stories. <laughs> <laughs> this cultural story, this one was uh, basically one of the best. Because I remember when uh, it was perfect, nice guy, like very, very nice guy. And uh, they came two people, two people came, one girl and one guy to the same company from India. And with girl, we just came and say hello to each other. We hugged and uh, with the guy, I start to come closer to him. And I'm seeing that he is going kind of a few steps back. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, okay, hi. Then I give my hand and I'm seeing he gave like that already. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, it's like just different people, mm -hmm. just different people and different cultures. So basically one of the biggest and the most funny challenges it is to say hello for people. Yeah. Because you don't know how they are used to. And it's already in Estonia, just Estonians. Many of them, they are not used to hog if you are seeing first time person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you are taking right now into account that there is person from Philippines, India, Pakistan, Turkey, Nigeria, Argentine, Colombia, then it's even more bigger differences. So this is kind of very big. Then I'm thinking definitely culture about the same Pakistan as we were speaking that uh, they're not trusting at women. Yeah. yeah. They are not trusting what women is telling. And then uh, very often even you need to say that um, my some kind of male colleague confirm this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that there is no any male colleague or there is some, but for them it's important that male colleague confirm this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is, sometimes it's strange, sometimes it's not, and uh, you just have to accept it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very sad. I mean, we yeah. talked about it previously when, yeah. we, when we met as well, and it just like uh, the blows my mind, like how how like these the, <laughs> these ideas are in, in our heads yeah, that exactly. uh, like we don't uh, li like we're not li like we're not used to taking genuine honest uh, feedback or advice mm -hmm. just because somebody's a woman yes. like it's 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 so weird like um and then i think um we were also talking about this one aspect of there was this one uh, time when a person came to the job and yeah. then her, yes. her manager. It was exactly like uh, from Pakistan person that the CEO asked from him before hiring him that, OK, your team lead will be a woman. Mm -hmm. Is it OK with you? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, no, it's not OK. Wow. And just because team lead was a woman. Wow. That is so it's uh, kind of showing how big uh, cultural differences. But in other hand, Maybe it's better what he will do here in Estonia if he cannot accept it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's so like amazes my mind how like all of these people are well educated, right? Yeah. They're well experienced. Yes. Otherwise, they wouldn't even be qualified yes. to come here. So, I mean, it it it's, it sort of blows my mind. How can you be able? How can you be in a position to say that just because your manager is a woman, that you will not? take this position. I don't know. Maybe on the other hand, they had another offer that they wanted to take. Maybe. That, that, that could be another thing. But 
to make this as an excuse that's that 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 is yeah. So weird, and I think I think I don't I wouldn't even want to say that it's it's the culture. That maybe it's the bad part of the culture as well, because um, it's uh, it's it's no justification for for anything. Like uh, it's just bad behavior. Like it's uh, maybe it's not like bad behavior because he's at home as well. No, you know, so it's not like yeah. a bad behavior. But in the same time, uh, world is changing. Yeah. You have to accept that if you're going to other country. There will be different culture. Yeah. There will be different people, different attitude. And if it's for you, kind of deal breaking point, then, then yeah, it is. then then, then you have to is. then you have to live in a global world. Yeah, I think one of this aspect of this why I think, the, like a lot of times, even in Estonia, I see people justifying a lot of things that Estonian behaviors are, like mm -hmm. for example, cold and. Cold, yeah. uh, very difficult to make friends and one of the never things smiling. never or smiling and one of the things that i always say that it's part of our culture yes. as well so i think to a certain extent it's okay to say that okay we are closed and cold and reserved mm -hmm. and that's part of our culture but on the other hand it's the same argument right you are living in the global world you are getting all the benefits of the global world you are getting talent from the global yes. world so at what point do you have to start thinking on that level as well, because um, Estonia is not a closed country anymore. Of like course. you need people, and you need like people from all over the world. And you need people. Just I would say like very not nice way, but you need people who are coming here to work. Yes. That to keep your pensioners, to yeah. Keep your schools, social life. You need people. You need smart people. And in Estonia, actually, many people are thinking that uh, oh, everybody, if we will uh, release all restrictions, everybody will come here. Mm -hmm. Actually, to come to Estonia is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can come here only if you are well-educated, smart person. Your salary must be really very big that you could come here. Yeah. And uh, But most of the time, people didn't know this. They are thinking that, okay, some foreigners will come and take our jobs. Yeah. As many foreigners are coming here to work, there most of them is IT specialists. Yeah. And in Estonia, definitely, we are missing of them. Yeah. It's not, nobody's taking my job, nobody's taking your job. It's... Just we are missing those people. Yeah. So that's what people are thinking. And uh, also the same as I mentioned you previous time, one my husband, uh, like older relatives, they were also, they were not, let's not say that they were against foreigners. It was maybe too strong to say, but um, they were also more like this Estonian, like Estonia for Estonian. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came to the family also, they were watching into me, I think, first few months, kind of suspicious way that who is that Lithuanian girl? <laughs> who she is, you know? And then one time we were discussing with them and they said, OK, you are working in such a such a position, but why those foreigners are coming? And they were like from negative perspective speaking. Mm -hmm. And I said, but do you know that I am foreigner myself? Mm -hmm. I am foreigner myself. And then they were telling also that you are normal foreigner. <laughs> I said, but how do you know that those people are not actually it's so hard to come mm -hmm. to Estonia? If you will just make whatever crime or whatever, you will be very, very quickly deported from the country. Oh, yeah. It's actually so, so hard to be here. Yeah. And you are all the time under pressure. Yeah. And how do you know that those people are not normal? Mm -hmm. No, they are not people. You are normal and I and other people are not normal foreigners. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's how it's going sometimes in yeah. those older people because yeah. they don't know. Just yeah. they don't know. I mean, there's so much the like. I think this idea of a foreigner who are here because I think the 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 sentiment that is in like probably I don't know about majority of Estonians, but what I see sometimes off in the YouTube comments as well, like foreigners have to be a certain way if they if they come here, like. Mm -hmm. Like hundred percent of the responsibility for them to accommodate in Estonia is lying lying with them, but then I also think that there has to be some percentage of responsibility that people here have to take up as well to to take in because these people are not like refugees. These mm -hmm. people are not seeking asylum. Mm -hmm. These people are here, let's say, at the request of Estonia. Because mm -hmm. if you are coming to Estonia for work, your employer has to prove that they cannot find the same person in yes. Estonia yeah. for the same mm -hmm. salary. And in the EU for the for the yes. same salary as well. So they have exhausted all their possibilities, and now they are able to, you know, get 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 this other person. And this person, whoever that comes here, I mean, majority are are young, like in yeah. their twenties and thirties. They're not a 
they're not like they're not coming here for social money yeah they are coming here for work yeah and mm -hmm. they they pay the highest amount of taxes yes. because they earn a lot uh they're not like drawing any healthcare benefits mm -hmm. because of course you're and young you yeah you're young and healthy and uh they are spending all their money here as well and mm -hmm. so i mean a foreigner is like a gold mine for any country and of course. the thing is that the as more and more world becomes like open countries will start to compete with each other for mm -hmm. talent mm -hmm. and uh, like <laughs> so i think there has to be some kind of responsibility that that locals or estonians of course it's your country mm -hmm. of course everybody here is a guest but if you want people that run your economy if you mm -hmm. want people that pay for the pensions mm -hmm. and healthcare and all child benefits and mm -hmm. all, all these things uh, who are a net positive to the economy then you have to start taking a little bit yes, a little start from respect yeah let's start from respect <laughs> yeah yeah and i think respect is it's, it's, it's so important but also like you have a right to be here and you have a right to call this place a home like of course. yeah that's that's is Estonia in your home yeah of course it is my home uh, Why not? So? yeah yeah so i think that is and another thing that you mentioned and that, that about the pressure i can mm -hmm. uh, as a as a foreigner it's like so huge yeah. because you are constantly under the eyes of mm -hmm. the of the state like yeah. you have to be an exemplary citizen and to a certain extent it it works because of course people like to stay under the radar mm -hmm. people don't want to ruffle any feathers and these things but i also felt in myself and all the other people as well that if you are face mm -hmm. if you face some discrimination mm -hmm. or if you face somebody who is openly like uh, i don't know, like abusing mm -hmm. you or these things then sometimes i have felt and i think also many other like foreigner experts have felt that they don't want to reply they don't want to create a mm -hmm. scene or they, they don't want to speak anything about they that they don't want to fight for them right yeah they don't want and uh, mm -hmm. i think i felt that the same way for a very long time like i didn't want i i didn't say anything if i ever come across this this problem but uh, i think the way to solve is not to ban like hateful speech but mm -hmm. it's it's your responsibility to confront the other person as well and to say that in in your own way that okay i am here but i have uh, the right to be here i am here legally i am pay my taxes mm -hmm. i fulfill all my state responsibilities and uh, there is no way that any person can tell me to go home yes <laughs> yes that's actually we are we have the same rights yeah we have totally the same yeah. rights we are totally equal yeah, yeah. and especially as estonia is telling that everybody is equal here yeah yeah so that one is really very important you know that doesn't matter if you have your legal rights here to be you're paying all taxes you're living here nicely you have the same rights as that estonian who is living here 50 years yeah, yeah. you both have totally the same rights yeah yeah that's Do you know uh, after this comment how many negative comments we will get <laughs> oh i'm sure i'm sure the there the will be uh, quite a few but 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 it's a conversation and we can have that con conversation it's a yeah <laughs> it's it's such a different thing because I, I like i feel the sentiment from a lot of people who, who don't know much about foreigners and i think to a certain extent foreigners are to be blamed as well mm -hmm. because they tend to stick to their bubbles right like if you come to like a big company like i don't know whether it is bold or mm -hmm. whether it is wise you have so many foreigners there and you have such a huge circle there that you just drop in there and you're part of this like club yes. and then you don't leave that club and estonia is not the same as that club like mm -hmm. estonians that you meet in those companies are not the same estonians that are regular estonians because those are uh like different like of course. so you have to be able to get out of your bubble and i i feel this as like a like a problem i think this is a problem because people are having their own parallel like streams mm -hmm. of 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 life then i think maybe you know maybe it's not like a problem i think people are just living so comfortable that they don't want to go out from this comfort zone yeah and uh, i remember it's the same when i went to my another work like new new perfect company where i was working there was also the same that uh, first month nobody was speaking with me but as i already knew it i had experience i went and i pushed myself to speak with them and when you are pushing Estonian yeah. people to speak, then they start to speak with you. Yeah, yeah. So maybe people are just like to be in comfort zone. I like to speak in Estonian language. It's okay if there is some foreigner existing next to me, let him exist, but that's it. But if I have to start to speak already, mm -hmm. then it, it means I have to make one step 
Yeah. And uh, maybe just, it's not like a problem. I think it's maybe more people like to be in comfort zone. Yeah. And they are afraid. They are also afraid to speak in English language. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was studying my Estonian language and uh, at my work, also people could speak with me in Estonian language. And uh, I was trying to speak in Estonian language and they said to me, no, Karolina, we want to speak with you in English that we could practice our English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like sitting and I, but I need Estonian language to practice, you know, mm. and you are Estonians, you could kind of help me. But instead of, instead of that, you are asking that I would help to all of you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So people are afraid actually to come out from their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe the biggest issue. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, and I think here, the more the, the, the responsibility or I, I don't even think responsibility or what works is that if you are an outsider, then you have to take the initiative. Yes. You have to take the step forward. Yeah, for me, like it was a huge challenge, you know, social because I was mm -hmm. myself like an introvert as, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, I had to create like an extroverted personality in myself mm -hmm. to be able to live here and to make yes. friends and to talk to people. I mean, I'm still a very introverted person at heart, but uh, it's uh, you have to do that. You have yes. to take initiative and uh, I think if you try hard enough, then you will find people who are, you know, like, who like you and who, mm -hmm. I mean, some of my uh, best friends from in, in Estonia all the time are Estonians that I've been living for, for, uh, that I've been in touch with for like mm -hmm. such, such a long time, nine years. So it takes a lot of time. That's yes. the thing. It, it takes. You have to just make so big effort for that yeah. actually. Yeah. But in the same time, yes, we are speaking that people are equal or everybody has the same rights. But anyway, foreigner has to make bigger steps yeah, yeah. to come closer to Estonians. Yeah, yeah, that's... So it is also like that. I remember like all these things when I was trying to go to Estonians, trying to speak. And uh, sometimes I'm succeeding, sometimes not. It mm -hmm. depends. But I know that I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm trying. So if people don't want to communicate with me, they don't want. Mm -hmm. I'm trying it. Let's see it. Yeah, that's uh, and I think that it takes like a a, a level of um, to be able to to you know like confront uh, discomfort, like to be able to live in uncomfortable situations. Yes. If you are not able to do that, then you will not succeed here because uh, yeah. it's not like uh, it's not easy country to it's, live. It's not it's not definitely not an easy country to live or socialize here. Yes. So that's, that's definitely, uh, um, it's again, it depends, you know, many people are just creating uh, like the moon bubble mm -hmm. and they're living, I don't know, Indians, I know definitely have the moon society here. They're living and they don't need a stone language. They're not searching a stone friends and then it's fine. It depends also what do you want? But, uh, in my kind of, I'm thinking that, uh, if you already came here, you should socialize. Yeah. You kind of should a little bit learn local language, mm -hmm. show respect for the country. That's my point of view. Yeah. But, uh, of course, everybody thinks as as they want. Yeah, yeah. I think a person has the right. Of course, I mean, like for example, if you're an IT professional, then you don't. Then you're working in an inter yeah. international environment. You have people from all over the world. You don't necessarily need uh, Estonian to practice or to of do course. anything. Then you go for all these things. You have a hangout circle where all the people are foreigners, and so you sort of happy. Yeah, and you're yeah, happy, and that happy. and and that works. But. Um, yeah, again, again, it's, it's your preference of how, how you yes. want to be and you live in. But I think if you are here, then it might, it, you're, you're missing something. You're missing a yes. huge part of this, like this, what happened here, the culture and everything. Uh, it's like looking at something like from the iceberg, mm -hmm. very top, mm -hmm. that you see this very little percentage yes. of Estonia. Because actually also when, um, we are making kind of at work intercultural trainings and it's exactly iceberg. It's example, one of example. Uh, on iceberg top, you are seeing the language, you are seeing local food, local clothes, you know, you are seeing these things. But actually, the biggest part is under the water. Mm. So there is those unwritten rules, what you don't know, what you just have to leave and then you are getting to know them. Those cultural things, there is those things what without being here and without feeling everything, mm -hmm. you don't know. Yeah, you never know. And in Estonia, there are many unwritten rules. There are so many unwritten rules. Yeah, that, that that's that's a huge topic in my yes. YouTube as well oh. to to talk about these things. So, uh, but 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 I mean, of course, it's again, it comes back to the same level that it's the culture, and then mm -hmm. you have to sort of understand the culture. You have to 
I think first you have to understand it, you have to follow it, you have to live it mm -hmm. before you can say, okay, if this works for me or if it doesn't work for me or if this is right mm -hmm. or wrong. You have to live it before you are able to, or before you... Before you have to go out from this, your safe yeah, verbal, yeah. from this, your safe community that it's okay. Mm. I'm with my friends, all my friends, let's say all my friends are Lithuanians. Yeah. I'm speaking only with Lithuanian people, so I don't care. I'm living here, I don't know what is happening. You can live like that. Oh. Many people are living and it's totally fine. Mm. But uh, I prefer to live differently. I prefer to study language, to work with international people, international companies. I want to, I want to know what is happening in Estonia, I don't know, politics, music, like I want, I'm yeah, interested yeah. because I want to be part of this country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So both ways are okay. Everybody yeah. choosing. Yeah, I, th I think I like what I, one thing that I've learned so far is that you have to put your energy and attention to the immediate place where you are yes. right now. You have to think of your home and then your neighborhood and then your city mm -hmm. and then your country. Like, you shouldn't waste your energy thinking about what's happening on the other corner of the of world. Like, but focus more on where you are and how, and that is why I always uh, tell, like, uh, in my content as well, that talk to your neighbors. Like, of at least Estonia give, yeah, like, like, make an effort because your neighbor, a good neighbor is like a blessing. Like of even course. even the Bible says that, like, love thy neighbor. But uh, Manal, I'm very sorry. Can I use the chance and send greetings to my neighbors? Sure. <laughs> my dear Christina, greetings to you. <laughs> because yeah. I have perfect neighbors. Yeah. I have really perfect neighbors. And, and I have uh, really, really great neighbors too. And they're, they're... So you can use a chance also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Melina, she's a... Uh... She's a, yeah, she's a really nice neighbor. And the, the, I, I talk about this story many, many times. When I first met her, she didn't even speak a word to me. And it's, of course, to it's this normal. day, to this day, she speaks in Estonian to me and mm -hmm. uh, we communicate to each other in Estonian, even though my Estonian is like pretty bad. But <laughs> no, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, I, but, but yeah, it's, uh, but uh, like, like the way I often talk to other people about this is that building a relationship in Estonia with locals and friendships and all this thing is like growing a plant. Mm -hmm. You can't rush it. You have to water it, you have to put it in the sun. And uh, like true friendships and the level of commitment that you have, you will not see anything before like three or four years. Like, and it's also with the neighbors, it's coming back to the same topic. Yeah. It's the easiest to make it. Yeah, it's, it's the, the easiest, easiest to make. to make connection because you are seeing them, yeah. maybe not every day, but very often you're yeah. seeing them minimum once per week. Yeah. When the last time you saw some of your friends, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like... And, 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 and you know, the, the thing about Estonia is that it's a very, very close, tight-knit network. Oh, yes. Like, oh, yes. if you say something or if you, like, have a... Or if, you're, if you do something wrong, then your reputation, it travels fast oh, in yes. very, very every aspect. Mm -hmm. People know everything. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, everybody in my street knows me. Like everybody, I am pretty sure. I know in my village because I'm not living in Tallinn. Yeah. I'm living in a small village. I am pretty sure everybody knows me. That Lithuanian. Yeah, yes. I am. Like everybody knows me. I'm 100% sure, and they and they often tell me that. But and the weirdest thing is the only place that people people actually smile to me mm -hmm. is my own street. Like that's <laughs> the only place. Like. Uh, and sometimes Kalamai as well overall because because there are a lot of foreigners uh, who are watching your channel. <laughs> may, maybe, but it's Estonians. Like it's it's the people who live yes. in my street, and I don't know them uh -huh. by by heart. I know a few place uh, faces here and there, and they just smile at me. The kids, uh, the 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 elders, they just look at me and they smile. So the, the, it it took me seven years. Like that's the thing. That's what I want to tell you. Yeah. That to earn. A smile on the first meeting it takes seven years, so you have to <laughs> you have to stay consistent. You have and it's uh, yeah, it takes time. It's not, yeah. but I also have faith. I I don't know how true that is. That the slower it is, the longer it lasts. Yes, so Estonian cities like that. So the, the, it's not so it's not like a you know like a firework that goes up, <laughs> burns, and mm -hmm. everything is light up. It's more like a, you know, like a little candle that keeps small light, yes. but keeps burning for for me. Because many. it is like that. For example, I can I know that I can call to my Estonian friends. It doesn't matter that I didn't see them maybe one two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know that if I need help, yeah. if uh, something is happening, I know that I can call to them. Yeah. And they know the same for that I will help them yeah. always. Yeah. And uh, there are many different nationalities, people who are immediately smiling to you, immediately open, but after three days they don't remember even yeah, your yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. 
Yes. Yeah. It's 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 a balance of these things. But the but the thing is that, like, because we we people generally play so much emphasis on first impressions, right? Yeah. So that is why it becomes hard for them to to you know to to go ahead with this mm -hmm. it's because first impressions aren't like majority of the time they're not great <laughs> yeah, that's that's true but over time slowly like a candle you can it it uh, it it, yes. it happens mm -hmm. it happens and especially if you're meeting some estonian person first time you are seeing that you know totally cold face no emotion i think you're meeting second time is the same third time and fourth time the person starts to smile to you. yeah yeah, yeah. actually it's starting you know yeah. and then you are seeing that okay this relationship kind of is moving yeah. it's okay yeah. And that's that's how it's going in Estonia. That yeah. um, if you are coming and you don't see smiling people around it, it's totally fine. Yeah, it's it's normal. totally fine, totally normal. It's nothing against you, mm -hmm. against your skin color, religion, or some other things. But uh, if you're meeting more and more, people will start to smile. Mm -hmm. People will start to smile. Just give a chance because it's not, as you said very nicely, you know, it's not a firework which is just coming yeah. and exploding. Yeah. It's like a candle. It's like a slow candle. It yeah. just burns, but then you need to give it time and uh, some effort and you need to earn the trust and trust mm -hmm. is earned not by saying anything not by doing anything but just being there like repeatedly every yes. day every yes. day people see you people see you he's there he's there he's there he's there it's he's there. like my this work story that yeah. one and a half year after one and a half year finally the guy started to speak with me and he said that everything is fine actually absolutely everything is fine what i will tell to you that mm -hmm. if everything is going okay i have nothing to say yeah. yes mm -hmm. and i was like oh, okay Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you that after one and a half year when I was sitting and thinking, so when he's firing me, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he finally told that yeah. everything is okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is Estonian culture and you have to just, uh, when you are coming here, you have to know about it mm -hmm. and uh, accept it because yeah. it is, you cannot actually change anything. Yeah, you cannot change. No, you can only change yourself. Yes. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the, that's that's the main it. thing here. Yeah. Um, okay. We are near wrapping up our conversation. Um, what would you like to say to people who are like right at the beginning of their journey to come to Estonia? Is there anything that you would like to... I know we've said a lot of different things, but any... Yeah. Maybe mainly, you know, what is important thing, do not afraid. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter, are you coming alone or you are coming with family? Do you have relocation company or you are just making <clears throat> as this uh, Argentinian, my guy, just an adventure? Come, try, mm -hmm. don't afraid. I can promise nobody will bite you here. <laughs> Everything yeah. is fine. Yeah. If something is happening, you can always go back home. Yeah. So just try. It's actually a wonderful country to live. It's a very secure country to live. Yeah, it is very. Right. So this is what is very important to most of people. And uh, don't afraid. Yeah. Don't afraid. To have, have a little courage to do it. Uh, even if you have to do it, do it while, you, while you're scared. <laughs> yes. Yes, but do it anyway. Do it anyway. Yeah, do it anyway. Yeah. It's a it's a huge risk, but but I understand. Um, but okay. you can always turn back and uh, go yeah. back to home. But later on, in the end of the day, you will sit and you will think, oh, why you, I didn't yeah. do it? You why you I didn't try it? Regret. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a big thing. Um, okay, that was great. Thank yeah. you, Carolina. It was great talking you. to you and uh, sharing all these thoughts with you because you are like a fellow foreigner, <laughs> non I am, yeah. like a European foreigner. Yes, uh, European uh, Baltic. immigrant, Baltic. <laughs> European Baltic immigrant. Um, but yeah, I had a really lovely time talking to you. And I think there are so many different things that are that we share. We still didn't share. Yeah, we, we still, but we, we can always talk later as well. Okay, but uh, thank you everybody for watching. And if you have any thoughts or ideas, you can put them down in the comments. Um, like, share and subscribe and... Uh, yeah any suggestions on future guests anybody that you would think i should talk to or if you want to talk to me then uh, you can always write in the comments and my email is in the channel description thank you bye bye okay, thank you